Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to a little bit of a special worship this morning. We are all here as the church, and being the church, we are in support of one another. So let us worship together our amazing and glorious God. But first, because we have changed everything up, we are going to change it up so much that we're doing announcements first. And Pastor, Pastor Stakey, as long as you're standing there, do you want to come up and do your announcement right away? I shall. Can you hear my voice? Yes. That's a shame, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> this is a prayer breakfast on the 19th of Oakdale. It is uh, sponsored by Mark Landry. I can't help me out. You need the microphone, they're saying. I just got my eyes fixed. So. <laughs> Our sponsoring organization is for the prayer breakfast is what? Representatives. Representatives, okay. I know it's got some farm folks, it's got some political, it's got some neighborhood. It's Ten, uh, I think $10 for breakfast, 9 o'clock. Okay. And uh, I've got a number of 608-343-6666. Easy to remember, but they need a count, a head count. So you can call myself or you can call Nancy or the church if you can get somebody on the line. And we would invite you there. That's Saturday, prayer breakfast and good food. Very good food at that one, in fact. Thank you. The 19th, next Saturday. The time is 9 a.m. Snowmobile Oakdale Large Building. <laughs> you all know where that is, right? No. Oh, well, yes, the bank right <laughs> next to the bank. Any questions, check with Nancy or John after service. Um, also, this next week, this next Sunday, we will be celebrating 12 students being confirmed in their faith at the 1030 service. So please plan on joining us for that as well. Um, again, being the church is a lot of different aspects, and, and it is good to be the church together. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Landscaping, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. here, fall cleanup. So if you have a couple of extra hands in the morning, come and help get stuff spruced up and trimmed up before the, hopefully, winter doesn't come. So, all right. Anything, oh, outside the double doors, there is a flower arrangement given in honor of Laura Huber's. 90th birthday today. So if you see her, she was just moved, but if you see her, please extend a happy birthday to her. And I wasn't supposed to tell, according to him, but according to his daughter, Tom Peterson is also turning 90 on Tuesday. So a very big happy birthday to him. All right. With that, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. In all his works. The Lord upholds all who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed. And ministers to them. The Lord is my strength and my song. 
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we will have a special song by the praise team, but you are free to join in.
Please pray with me. We come into your presence, loving creator, in many ways. Sometimes we seem to skip down the aisle, just like children, bouncing with anticipation. Sometimes we come hesitantly, gearing to bring our mistakes and guilt to you. Sometimes we come stomping down the aisle, needing to ask you why and tell you of our anger. Sometimes we come into this place under such a heavy load that we can hardly make our way. You know, loving God, how each of us has come this day, what our needs are, what we bring with us as we prepare to worship with others. Grace us with your calming presence. Help us to trust your promise of peace and to come as children come, to be with each other and with you. Amen. The Lord be with you. So as our reader comes up this morning, I just want to quickly point out that these lessons we picked are not lessons that are necessarily being talked about in our messages this morning, but they are messages from God about his attitude toward each of us. Good morning. Our first reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter, starting with the 28th verse. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Our responsive reading is from Psalm 103, starting with the first verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? And our second lesson comes from the third book of John, 2 through 4. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health, just as it is well with your soul. I was overjoyed when some of the friends arrived and testified to your faithfulness to the truth, namely how you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than this to hear that my children are walking in the truth. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of our gospel, which comes from Mark chapter 5, starting with the 21st verse. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be well, made well, and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather she grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? 
And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Here ends the reading of our Lord. Please be seated. So I'm going to ask Lisa Lawrence to come up first this morning. But as she does, I wanted to point out that in our first meeting, it was pointed out to me that the word cancer doesn't exist in the Bible. But that doesn't mean the people didn't experience their fair share of suffering and anguish. People of deep faith can be completely torn apart by disease and pain. But our God is so good. And we cannot let anything take that confidence away from us. And that is what today is all about. So, Lisa. On November 16th, 2017, my life changed. My phone rang and the caller ID said the call was from Gunderson. I knew instantly this wasn't going to be a good call. My mammogram showed more testing needed to be done. On November 28th, the diagnosis was official. I had breast cancer. A few years ago during a sermon, Pastor Dave said, you can't worry and pray at the same time. He didn't mean it as a challenge. However, worrying is sort of a hobby for me, so my anxious brain said challenge accepted. One of my favorite Bible verses is Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. I knew there was hope because Kathy is a survivor. This certainly wasn't my first affliction, and my son is living proof of the power of prayer. The worrying and praying were in overdrive. When and how was I going to tell my son Nathaniel? My ex-husband and I suffered with infertility for two years. Like the story of Hannah, I prayed for a child. I never forgot God's answer to those prayers and made being the best mom I could be a priority. He was a sophomore in college and getting ready for finals. When do I tell him? Like many middle-aged women, I was in a generational sandwich. I was also responsible for my parents. I made health care decisions for my mom, who had Alzheimer's, and I was legal guardian for my dad, who was in the process of being moved to a nursing home. Mom was easy. She no longer knew who I was, so I didn't tell her anything. My dad, I told after I finished treatment. He wasn't happy with me, but he forgave me. Once I could focus my worrying, the praying began in earnest. Help Nathaniel get through this. The answer to those prayers were more than I could have hoped. He had a day off to study for finals. My surgery landed on that day, and he was able to be with me that day. He was able to speak to the surgeon and was reassured that all of the cancer had been removed. He found emotional support in a trusted advisor at school who was also a breast cancer survivor. His then girlfriend, now wife, spent a couple of days with me while he took his finals, so he wasn't getting the mom version of how I was doing. When I was healed from surgery, I had a genetic test that showed I didn't need chemo. I was beyond joyful with that news. At the time, radiation for breast cancer was 33 treatments. When you finish treatment, you can ring the bell and sign a picture. This landed during Nathaniel's spring break, so I invited him to watch me celebrate. All of the emotions he was holding on to came flowing out and I said to him, it is all over now. My body was burned, but my heart was full. God had him so I could fight my cancer. You may have noticed I didn't mention praying for myself. That is because I didn't need to. I knew I was being prayed for by you. Thank you for your prayers. 
Lisa speaks so passionately about cancer's effect on her. But cancer could not erode her confidence in Christ. We read about that confidence in Hannah in 1 Samuel. Hannah, we are told, was barren until she prayed begging for a son from God that she could dedicate to the Lord. We are told she was greatly distressed. The words literally mean having bitterness of soul. Or in other words, Hannah was struggling great mental and emotional anguish over her circumstances. But Hannah still seeks God honestly and humbly in prayer. So did Lisa. Hannah trusts God and that his plan is better than her plan or way. So does Lisa. Hannah praises God in all circumstances. Like Hannah, Lisa remembered a time she prayed for her son. And when she needed it most, her son Nathaniel was there to support her in all circumstances. And she praised God. Hannah's struggle shows us that it's okay to grieve and be sad regarding any trials or afflictions. Her great faithfulness and continuing to turn to God and her strength of character did not take away her intense emotions. God did not rebuke her for being discontent. He understood her feelings and heard every fervent prayer she spoke throughout this challenging season of her life. Lisa quoted Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. We don't know how many years Hannah waited for a child, but eventually she is given a son. And she waits until Samuel is weaned and she takes him to the temple. She says, now I am going to give him to the Lord and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. Hannah has ultimate praise. Cancer or any trouble cannot take our confidence away from the Lord. Our faith in a loving Father and trust in him gives us confidence to carry through this life. Like Lisa, we can come away with our body burned, but our hearts full of Christ. Rejoice in confident hope. Be patient and keep on praying. Now we are going to ask Sharon Anderson to come up and speak about how cancer cannot stifle laughter. In 2009, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I was 65 years old and going to retire from my job in June of that year. It was a shock, but a reality. I had support from my husband and all of our families. A lumpectomy, radiation, and I'm back in the race. Hooray! Thank you, God. Sometime after that, two young ladies who had breast cancer decided a sport group was a plus for many, and it is. We shared tears together, supported each other, and shared many laughs together as we shared each of our experiences. We decided we needed a name for our group, and not being a woe-is-us type of group, but always finding humor in our discussions, this is what we are known as. Boob group. Fitting, right? Well, yes, and I guess could be all, I guess could be the answer to that. As I walked up here today, I walked up slowly, hoping you'd read the back of my shirt. If you missed it, it says, "I won fighting cancer one giggle at a time." Some may say there's nothing funny about cancer of any kind. In your right. There isn't anything funny about the illness, but your attitude when it is a reality to you counts a great deal. One of my favorite songs is One Day at a Time. Well, in February of 2022, I went in for the boob hugs. 
A couple of days later, got one of those, you need to come back. That's not a call back to have a celebration about your boob hug. I had a return concern. Laying my head down and tossing and turning that night, I remember saying, God, please help me through this. Yupper, the nasty buddy, was back. Through tests that were done, there was a question involved in that same side as my lumpectomy. And I guess one side didn't want to be outdone by the other side, so it had an issue also. I'm at this time now 78 years old. Doctor communicated choices. I thought the 78-year-olds are now drooping a bit and have their little issue, so I said, time for them to go. Doctor said, you will have the chest of a 12-year-old boy. What they were unable to remove is that roll a little further down called my belly. But I'm working on that. So yes, admittedly, another shock, but one day at a time. I had the support this round of the boob group, a husband with Lewy body dementia who was unaware of the situation, but family stepped up to the plate to help me out. <clears throat> Stepson was there to take care of John, his dad. My son said, I'm taking you to your surgery appointment. And I'm saying, you don't have to do that. His response was, I am taking you. So that was the end of that story. It happened to be the surgery on his birthday. So surgery with no chemo or radiation needed. However, the 12-year-old chest did not work well with many of my articles of clothing. So there are many options, which I will not share with you all today, but will communicate if anyone really wants to know. I will tell you that I want, when I found the perfect solution to my situation, at our next boob group gathering, I got up and walked around the table as if modeling and asked if they could tell anything different about me. Yes, there was laughter. It's legal to laugh. The other positive is when I'm out mowing our two-acre lawn, I can put my boobs in the box so it's cooler and there's no bouncing. <laughs> Remember to find the positive in your situation. To finalize, I do not make light of cancer and do realize that I'm an older lady, but your attitude towards this and any hurdle you face is very important. Trust in God, pray, ask for prayers from others, and take one day at a time. Cancer cannot stifle laughter. Sharon said she was fighting cancer one giggle at a time. Again, there is no breast cancer in the Bible, but God, who is our God, will equip us all with the tools we need to get through whatever struggle it might be. And sometimes those tools aren't what we expect. You know, most of us will pray for medical breakthroughs and miracles of the problems just disappearing, but sometimes those tools look like our precious memories or courage or even faith and peace. And sometimes it looks like laughter. With our God in our corner, none of those can be taken away. In Genesis, we come across a woman who was simply looking factually at her circumstances, which communicated to her that it was impossible for her to overcome her biggest trial. She was 90 years old. In Sarah's mind, Having a son was not funny. It was absurd. Cancer is not funny. Having cancer is not funny. But it is absurd. Sarah didn't plan to become pregnant. In fact, I'm sure she had no hope of becoming pregnant. I mean, at this point, menopause was pretty far in her rearview mirror. This is simply not possible. So maybe Sarah might have laughed because she simply had no tears left to cry. Sarah's laughter and our laughter caused by sorrow will be turned into happy laughter caused by God. But the only way we can endure long periods of trial is by maintaining 
an ongoing relationship with God. And every human heart understands laughter. You know, unlike English or French or Spanish or some Somali language, we don't have to learn to speak it. In fact, the first laugh appears around three or four months of age. It occurs unconsciously. We can't consciously produce laughter. So I've been a little more inclined to believe that Sarah's laughter was what experts describe as that uncontrolled nervous laughter. You know, there was a lot of confusion and stress and bewilderment for her. There are so many emotions at work in her that her nerves get the better of her, and she laughs. I can't blame her for that. God didn't punish Sarah. I think it was because she really did believe, or at least she really wants to believe, but she's so confused. She's so stressed. And theologically, we know that God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. But when life turns sour, when all those walls begin to close in and there's no rational reason to believe life is going to get any better, we collapse. We struggle. And we've all been there. And we all know there are times when answers to our situations are illogical, irrational, and even impossible. But Sarah also may have had the last laugh. God did the impossible in her life, and she had the last laugh because God gave that to her. Sarah says, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me in Genesis 21. Cancer cannot stifle our laughter. As God does the impossible, we can, along with Sharon and all those others, laugh knowing we have an awesome God. And his will will be done. And finally, we are going to hear from Brian Knight this morning. It may seem a little odd that in a service like this, and the testimonies that we've heard this far that, that a man would come up and, and give a testimony. But truth is that men also suffer from breast cancer, sometimes physically, but mostly emotionally and spiritually. Sometimes, as we've heard, it's, it's sons and it's husbands. But as I found out in the spring of 2020, uh, sometimes it's also fathers. You know, cancer is cold, and cancer is cruel. It's indiscriminate and heartless. Cancer loves no one. It doesn't care whose life it wrecks. It doesn't care whose life it takes. Cancer is a dark reminder of our fallen nature. Science has worked for decades trying to find its cause and its cure. But when our daughter was diagnosed with breast cancer four years ago, I realized the answer to both. See, sin sin is the cause of cancer. Not, Not my sin, not Kay's sin, not even our daughter's sin. But the original sin that has placed a curse over all of God's creation. Yes, sin is the cause of cancer, but but God is its cure. Scripture tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Even the people in our lives that seem so innocent and blameless in our eyes, like my daughter. But it took the shock of hearing those words come from her mouth that she had breast cancer to make me understand these things. 
You see, cancer is everything that God isn't. Cancer comes to take, but Jesus comes to give. He comes to give life and give it abundantly. I praise God every day that he removed the cancer from Amber's body. He has blessed her and her family in more ways than I can count. But in the end, death does come for us all. You see, 10, 20, 50, or even 100 years from now, even the youngest here in this room today will all be gone. Cancer is a reminder that our bodies are finite. But praise God, our souls are infinite. Cancer can take what it wants, but it can never take the promise that those who are believing in him will have life everlasting. Brian said cancer comes to take from you, but Jesus comes to give. We know from Genesis 3 that Eve was deceived into sin and brokenness, but God did not keep her there. At the point of her taking the fruit from the snake, God could have just scrapped his creation and started over, but that is not our loving God. In these messages this morning, it has become clear that disease or injury or any suffering can never take the promise of everlasting life from those who believe and trust in our Lord. Our brokenness cannot take our souls. Adam and Eve brought sin and struggle to us, but God used Eve as a solution to the unraveling of his plan as well. By the end of the account of the fall, rather than the source of evil, God presents Eve as the source of redemption. Chapter 3, verse 15 says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. God loved Eve despite her disobedience and brokenness. He loves us despite our own. Eve feared and loved God. It's evident because she went and hid in the garden from him. But God would not allow Eve or us to stay hidden. He would not allow her or us to lose our souls to the evil. God made a way through Eve's descendant, Jesus, for everlasting life for all who believe. We have that promise of Christ. Cancer or any other affliction can take a lot from us, but but it cannot take the life of promise we have been given through Jesus Christ. I pray we all feel confident in Christ through our struggles and lean deeper into him. Amen. At this time, we are going to be having um, the praise team come back up and sing Sharon's favorite song. One day at a time, feel free to join us, and we are going to be taking donations for the giving jar, which goes to Samaritan's Purse, which are boots on the ground right now, working hurricane relief. So guys, you want to go and do some collecting for me, please?
prayer cards in the pew racks in front of you this morning. One is a prayer request card. You may put your request on here for the pastors, the church, and the prayer group to pray for, for it. And if you have a certain request that you'd like to speak to a pastor or someone about, you feel free to fill in your contact information and they'll get a hold of you. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, and the other card is a prayer card. This is a tool for you to use in your own prayers. Both of these cards have doilies printed on them, and the one says, you are under the doily of prayer. Kind of a strange thing to associate doilies with prayer. But of course, I have a little story. My Aunt Lois was a woman who prayed faithfully for her family, for the students she worked with every day, and of course, her extended family. Lois stayed in touch with her five nieces, and it was not uncommon to visit with her on the phone in my adult years. I knew she met with several of her close friends at Helen's kitchen table for coffee, and to pray over their families and loved ones. She often added me and my family to her prayers. During one of our visits, she told me what Helen's husband, Bill, had done. Bill was tidying up the kitchen one day, and without knowing its value, had thrown away the list of people they were recently praying for. Well, you can't criticize a man for cleaning up the kitchen, but this wasn't going to work. 
because even though they had met earlier that day for their time of prayer, they were not done praying for these people. Helen's kitchen was like most kitchens at the time. She had a centerpiece resting on a doily in the center of the table. It was decided that the list of prayer people was going under the doily, and then Bill would know that it was off limits from then on. Lois loved sharing this story with us, and I knew that as I went through my breast cancer treatments, I was under that doily often. Being prayed for is a blessing that is difficult to describe. In the middle of a storm, we can receive a peace that we didn't think was possible, but it is with prayer. I've come to realize that being under the doily meant that I was prayed for more than once, that I was prayed for by Lois, by Lois and her friends, and I was prayed for repeatedly. This is what Jesus taught us. Go somewhere quiet and pray alone. Pray in community and bring our prayers to God multiple times because he hears them. So use the larger card for your prayer requests and turn it into the church. And the other card is a tool for us to use in our prayers. Feel free to write your prayer or a special Bible verse for another person on that card. Refer to it frequently. Keep it under the doily and pull it out during your personal prayer time. Carry it with you during the day. Tape it to the bathroom mirror or give it to the person you are praying for. Use it as a tool. We have more, and we can print more. The prayer response for the congregation today is, let everyone hear, I am with you. You are not alone. Let us pray. Father of hope and healing, we pray for the one in every eight women who will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. We light a candle in prayer for every person who hears the words, you have cancer. Lord of life, give all who suffer the strength to face the unknown, patience to go through the tests, and courage to make the decisions that are best for them. Let everyone hear, I am with you. You are not alone. Great and awesome God, for every person with diseases, we pray you are with family and friends who are shocked and grieving. We light a candle in love as we trust in your love over all mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, children and siblings, friends and colleagues who wait and watch. Holy One, on the journey, give them strength to be with their loved ones. Let everyone hear, I am with you. You are not alone. Sovereign Lord over everything, we light a candle in support and prayer for all involved in medical research or part of care teams whose life and work make the hope of healing possible. We ask you, Lord, to guide their minds to discover the ways of cancer and other illnesses, and in compassion, care for your children who are suffering. Let everyone hear, I am with you. You are not alone. Holy One of courage and laughter, never leave us. Give strength and courage to those who endure the long days of appointments, to those to whom the treatment is so scary, to all those fighting back the brokenness of this life. 
Father, we light a candle as encouragement for all who fight the exhaustion, the fear, and the pain, and we pray for those who stay the course and look fear in the face with courage and even with humor as they look to you for relief and promise of everlasting life. Let everyone hear, I am with you. You are not alone. God Most High, show us how to be a family of faith who prays and visits, calls or sends cards, provides food and kind acts that bring comfort and love in your holy name. We light a candle in thanks for all that you, O Lord, have put in our midst to be the light of Christ shining in the darkness of this broken world. Let everyone hear, I am with you. You are not alone. Creator God, who knit us together in our mother's womb, look down tenderly upon us in our distress and touch us with your healing spirit. We pray to be made whole in body, mind, and spirit so that we may rise up to serve and honor you, the one who forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, as a special blessing for us this morning, we have a group of men who are coming up. Oh, we want to do that first. Okay, sorry. We have a special guest, um, June Potter to give us some hope. I would like to give you hope because I was diagnosed with breast cancer 32 years ago, 1992. So I wrote some things about hope with the letters. Hope is to go on living and look for all the reasons you're grateful. I'm grateful for my husband who also had cancer and heart attacks, et cetera, et cetera because he had what we call a dry, quick sense of humor. I saw him give, keep the doctors and nurses laughing as we went through treatment. He had a kindness and a peace about him through all of this. For opinion is O. I want to add about opinion. If you have a serious health pro problem, Get a second opinion. I had breast cancer and the first doctor wanted to operate immediately. I learned from my father years ago, if something serious, get a second opinion. So I asked for it. And I moved to another doctor. The second doctor said I had two choices. Well, I decided I was going to choose number two. Ironically, I found out later, my doctor was a surgeon years ago for President Johnson and for President Reagan's wife, Nancy. 
I am grateful for his gifted hands. The second part of hope is P. Pray and be positive, like Sharon said. I remember before going into the operating room thinking, let go and just let God. And then about the footprints in the sand, you all know. I cried on the elevator and the nurse cried with me. Jonah Salk once wrote, your mind has powers to turn the immune system around. So keep positive and pray. E, enjoy each day. The thought came 20 years ago, and now it's more, <laughs> while I was in radiation. And I don't know where it came from, but all of a sudden I quoted this to myself. We are only given a day at a time by our Lord, and future days are gifts that we all hope for. How are we going to live our dash from being born on the tombstone to dying on the tombstone? I want to leave this earth exhausted. Helping others, volunteering, relieves my stress. I also want to die, if possible, working, thinking, and laughing like my husband did. He had hope. Cancer scared me, but as I got home and everything settled down, I decided I'm going on living. And I had unbelievable experiences. Some of my travels from then were Singapore, Norway, etc. I had hope. And now I wish you hope because some of you are having these issues and have a safe journey through your life. I do want to add one thing that I have done because of my experience, and that this paper is out there on the table for anyone. There is what we call a cancer survivorship group, and it meets over at the Toma Health um, on the right side, that door, um, not on the Gunderson side, but you know what I mean by saying way over on the right side. And you go in that door, and right away you'll see 1B. That's the conference room. And we meet the second Wednesday every month. Sometimes I can't get there, and sometimes some of them can't, so you're not obligated. And it's from 10 in the morning till 11.30. Pretty much strict time, hour, hour and a half. And it, it became an issue for those that were coming to it. They were all in cancer treatments and they didn't have anyone who was out of treatments. And so I volunteered to go and say, you can go on living, and I told them many of my experiences, and they really enjoyed uh, hearing that, and that there was hope. So I have um, a last comment, and that is, it's a really interesting group. You don't have to say anything except your name and maybe what kind of your, um, cancer you have, because that's private if you don't want to. You can just come to the group and you just listen. And um, it's pretty interesting how some will talk and some really can't talk about their issues with cancer. So that's my comments. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a special blessing today. Some of the men, if you have been here in the last few weeks, You've heard Brian stand up and say, hey, men, stay after church. And many of them were a little bit nervous, but they have prepared something special. Yes, sir, men, come forward. Many of you know this song. You know, we share the struggle with you, ladies, and we have a number of our own, as you've known. 
And we know that, as the scripture gives witness, that God's power is made perfect when our strength is at its end. So, with this, I just invite you to just, we've drank, drank in all of the testimonies from you. Let us share a blessing for you. As we continue with our final song, let me just say this blessing to all of us. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore our sure defense, and help us to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A few more announcements that are in your bulletin or on the screen. Um, take note of those. And as we go out into the world, let us make sure that we go in confidence of our Lord, 
all those illnesses and trials, when they hit, we know that God is with us and he is our strength and our shield. So we can go in peace and serve the Lord.